this episode of the I Hate Matt Ball Poetry Podcast, where today we are going to be um, watching a video that was supposed to be a video, but then it got so long that I'm like, oh shit, this is a podcast. And what is it about? Say you, say you, say you. Um, I'm going to go over this in a bit on the thing, but... The people who listen to this show and who um, are who follow me on YouTube, you guys are great motherfuckers, and you guys send me shit all the fucking time that you know is going to piss me off, and I thank you for it. And I know you just do it because you like it when I get mad, but um, regardless. Um, Over the last, I don't know, I would say month or so, um, I've been getting videos from you guys, and um, I didn't want to watch them for a little bit because I was, like, getting tired of getting pissed off all the time. And then, like a fucking douchebag, I watched them all at the same time. I mean, not at the same time, but, like, one right after another. And then I got all mad, and I probably had a drink or two, and then it was night, And then I just started running the liquor, you know? So whatever. But um, basically, we're going to be talking about Bukowski. And we're going to be talking about how people review Bukowski. And we're going to be talking about um, Bukowski as a role model, which I think I actually have talked about on my channel before. I'm going to go back and look and see if I had. Um, And we're going to get into that. But I do have some updates things that I want to talk about. Um, First things first, uh, you can no longer get my shit on Etsy. I have finally walked away from Etsy. Um, I'm in the process of building a store on my website, but if you would like to get my new chat book, fuck you. Um, The only place you can get it is if you send me an email, I hate Mount at gmail.com saying that you want it and I'll send you an invoice. And if you want any other books on there too, um, throw that on there and I'll throw stickers in and some other shit for you as well. There's only 20 copies of these. The first nine are signed. Okay. Um, With that said, um, there is another thing I want to talk about. Ethan left me a comment that I wanted to hit before I forget. Um, I did a sort of response video to an episode of Slee Ricketts where they were talking about capitalization and punctuation in poetry. And um, Ethan like fact-checked me or corrected me or whatever. And I just wanted to um, tell you what he said because he nailed it. He said, I do dig this kind of shit. One kind of correction. In English, 99.9% of poets capitalize the first letter of each new line of poetry from the beginning of modern English to the mid-1900s. The rise of free verse in the early to mid-1900s caused poets to break with tradition and stop capitalizing the first letter of each new line because that capitalized letter was originally supposed to indicate a new unit of meter. For example, Milton's Paradise Lost, each new line of iambic pentameter. Then, along with what you said, word processors did contribute to a new rise of initial caps, especially among non-academic poets. Boom! So yeah, so um, Ethan dropped some fucking wisdom and um so thank you for doing that because in the video i did i was just like oh yeah no shit fucking word processors and microsoft word trying to fucking outsmart you the whole time like that that makes total sense um and that was something that buck said on the slee records episode and i was like oh that makes total fucking sense so um Thank you, Ethan, for clearing that up. Uh, The only other thing that I would say is going on with my work and my channel and stuff like that 
is I'm starting to make more videos for members than videos on my normal feed. So if you want more shit, because I was doing videos every day on YouTube. And um, the one thing that I have noticed for watch time, doing videos every day is great. For actual engagement, it's not so much. And I'm not saying this is for every genre of people doing stuff on YouTube. But when I only post like a couple times a week or once a week, my subscriber count goes up a lot and my um, video views goes up a lot. Um, whereas when I post every day, um, I t my like plus to minus subscribers kind of thing um, varies a lot more. Each video's view count isn't as high as when like initially high i'm not talking about long tail here i'm talking about like the first like few days um it's not as high and on top of all of that i'm like look members like pay for extra shit they should get the most shit so um i'm in this transition phase, I'm still trying to figure out exactly how to do it. But so probably on my main YouTube channel, there'll probably be like one writing tip video a week and one like podcast episode or something like that. Um, and then hopefully the daily content will be for the members. So um, if you're interested in any of that, there will be a link um, below this, wherever you're listening or watching this, to where you could um, join the channel for um, perks and shit like that. Maybe I'll read a poem out of my new book in the butt plugs. So stick around for that. Um, but it, if you ever wanted to know um, what I think about Bukowski what a lot of other people think about Bukowski and what a lot of douchebags think about Bukowski. Um, the next half hour or so um, is going to be riveting for you, okay? So, on with the show, Graham. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this video where we are going to figure out if Bukowski is a role model or not. We are going to decide if we are going to take the side of women who think he's a piece of shit or the angry young alpha male douchebags that worship the ground he walks on. Or maybe both, or maybe neither. But either way, I'm going to try to put to bed a bunch of shit that is going around YouTube and social media because I got pissed off five minutes ago. All right. You, the viewers of this channel, are fucking awesome. And you guys come through all the fucking time. You guys send me clips of shit that you think is going to piss me off. And you're usually right. You're usually fucking right. So I would say over, I don't know, over the last like month or so, I've gotten a lot of videos of people doing like book reviews of Bukowski stuff or just talking about Bukowski in general. And I am getting really fucking tired of being a Bukowski apologist because shocker. I don't think he was a good guy, okay? Like, I don't think... And again, like, like we weren't there with him on his deathbed, you know? So, like, we don't know what he grew into. All we know is from his work, from his art, you know? And that's something I'm going to be fucking bitching about here. And this is going to go all over the place. So, please, viewers of this video... Give me a fucking break. I'm going to be bouncing all over the place, and I'm trying to hit a bunch of different points. 
But um, the thing, I guess, that drives me more crazy than anything is that a lot of people who review Bukowski stuff do so almost, I think, almost as a way to be edgy. Like, oh, this is kind of a taboo topic. I'm going to touch on this. And I'm going to throw out my pearls, my, my wise, wise pearls here. And um, in the comments of the video, people might congratulate me for being brave or um, second my opinion or um, maybe every once in a while someone will get a little spicy in the comments and a debate might ensue. Hopefully it doesn't get too out of hand, you know, because fuck, I'm just trying to fucking make a video and collect that sweet, sweet AdSense fucking cash. Am I right? Um, so there's all that shit like playing into this stuff. And you can tell because a lot of the times when people are doing Bukowski videos, it, especially if you watch, sometimes if I see a, someone doing a Bukowski video and I've never seen any other videos they've done, I'll watch a different one that's on more, more of a mundane subject. Because when you see the baseline of how a person acts and how a person presents themselves in front of the camera, and then you give them something that they're kind of like, oh, I don't know how this is going to go. They get a little, like, like, awkward and smiley and kind of weird. If any of you out there are going, oh, like, send me links so I can see this. Just write Bukowski book review in the search engine and watch, or in YouTube, and pick any fucking video. And you're going to be getting this shit. Or the next thing you're going to get is um, some, like, dude who's, like, trying to, like, pump up and flex and shit in front of the camera talking about how fucking brilliant it is. And I hope I don't fall into that category, guys. But um, we'll try to talk of it in a way that also is edgy because their statement is is that Bukowski's not as bad as you think he is, and here's why. Now, I have been guilty of making videos like that in the past, but the reason why I make those videos is usually because somebody gives me shit and says, well, Bukowski did blah, 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 which is a total bullshit lie, and so then I do a video to go, well, that's actually not true. Here's what's going on. But... Was he a piece of shit for the most part? Did he fictionalize a lot of events that happened in his life to make him sound different? Of course he did. And since we're talking about the novels right now, you have to understand that these novels were written after he started becoming this mythologized character in the fucking, in Open City and fucking the L.A. Free Press. And in all of his short stories that he was selling to fucking the adult magazines. So his fan base, the people he's selling shit to, because if Bukowski is anything, Bukowski is a fucking businessman. And I know that sounds fucking crazy, but one of the things that I admire about him is not the way he lives his life or lived his life, not the way he drinks, not the way he womanizes, but the way he fucking kept shoving his shit down people's throats. And then he found out the kind of person that liked to eat his shit and he kept feeding them because they gave him money. Okay. Now, I don't know why this is the fucking case. And it might just be because Bukowski started in, like, for the most part, in little magazines, in Mimeos, in fucking just street rags, okay? 
And he wasn't a part of the fucking literati. He wasn't a part of the East Coast, well-educated, blah, blah, blah. That when people try to psychoanalyze his work the way they would someone who came up through the educational system, they have this, like, oh, well, fuck, man. Oh, it's not even the same fucking thing. It's a completely different deal. So you can't use the same shit. Just like I couldn't, sports analogy, I couldn't fucking go play football with a baseball bat. Like if I went out on a fucking field to be on a football team carrying a baseball bat, and when the quarterback like put his hand back to fucking throw that ball, I ran up and fucking cracked him in the face with a baseball bat. I would not be allowed to do that because there are different rules and those are different tools for different fucking sports. But guess what? They're both sports. But that doesn't mean everything is the same across the fucking spectrum of it all. So when you have these writers who worked for fucking money per fucking story suddenly writing a fucking novel, all of a sudden all these fucking educated fucks want to fucking look at it the same way they would look at some fucking Guggenheim motherfucker. It's not the same fucking thing. Okay, so that's first. Um, second, there are... Okay. Let me get into my notes. This is the thing that fucking cracks me up more than anything. And I feel like if anyone actually read... Like, I, I don't know how these people are actually reading these books. Because I think it's very fucking clear cut the way things are. And for some reason, this shit fucking is just like, I don't, I don't get it. I just don't understand. I hear so many people talk about Bukowski or Chinaski as like the tough guy. And like, yes, angry young dudes love Bukowski because he's a tough guy. Bukowski is the biggest fucking coward in all of his stuff. Like, it's all performative. It's all fake. And even in his stories, if you finish the story, he comes out a fucking coward. How is that a tough guy thing? How is that macho? I'm so tired of hearing people try to like, well, I just don't like Bukowski because, you know, the whole like tough guy thing and like the, like, like the machismo shit. <clears throat> and I'm like, what the fuck book are you reading? Maybe it's because I've actually, I don't know, read shit or like have been into different kinds of arts where there actually were tough guys and macho dudes or whatever. Bukowski is a fucking coward. It like he says in one of his books, he's like, um, the the idea that I've won even 30% of my fights baffles me, which I think is a high fucking estimate, first off. Um, but it's just like he is a fucking coward. All over the fucking place. He, like, what part of being a tough guy is like locking yourself in a room and drinking alone? How, how is that tough? How is like getting your ass kicked being a tough guy? How is getting bullied being a tough guy? How is getting your, your dad beating the shit out of you all the time make you a fucking tough guy? I feel like a lot of people who review Bukowski's stuff, like they focus way more on the mythology of what pop culture thinks Bukowski is than, than actually reading any of the fucking work. And then like you will hear people doing a book review on whatever book and then start saying things that do not happen in that book. And it's like, oh, that's weird. Like, um, I was just watching one. 
and they were reading Factotum. And maybe I'm fucking wrong, but I've been racking my brain and I can't fucking figure this out. Um, she was saying how in Factotum, she said this two times in the video, that he tried to fight and murder his co-workers. And then <clears throat> in one thing she said, <clears throat> um, he's mean to all the women in his life, even his women bosses. And I'm like, women bosses? Like, what the fuck is she talking about? Like, I couldn't think of what the hell that was. So if you know, fucking let me know so I know what the fuck I'm talking about. But, like, I can't fucking think of what the fuck that is. Um, I mean, shit. Factotum takes place during World War II. Like, I don't really know of America being pro-woman, like manager business owner like during that period maybe because some of the guys were at the war i don't fucking know but i don't fucking remember that so just like little things like that and it's like and like sometimes people misspeak i misspeak all the time no big deal i get it but i feel like a lot of the misspeaking is because um you're kind of plagued with what you've been told about the Bukowski myth. Let me let me hit some more of these points here because I, I guess I'm going to be talking for a while now. Okay, Bukowski is a misogynist. Um, I don't want to sit here and try to say that he's not. Um, but I would like to point out that that he is a coward. But yeah, I would like to point out that he is a coward. And he, in his books, in everything, he was terrified of women. He loved the idea of women, but he was fucking mortified of them. So this goes back to, like, angry young alphas loving Bukowski. Um, so to you angry young alphas out there... If you want to know what it's like to be terrified by women, and if you yourself are terrified of women, and you want a role model who is obviously terrified of women, then definitely read Bukowski and whatever. But it's like, I don't know. And like, so another little fun tidbit about Bukowski. He didn't become Bukowski. Like, he wasn't the working writer, Bukowski, until he was in his 50s. And then, like, his late 50s is when he started getting tail all the time. So, young alphas out there, if you want to, like, live your life the Bukowski way and idolize him and not have fucking sex until you're 50 fucking seven, knock yourself out. Yes, he had sex with a couple people in between the beginning and then. But, like, I'm just letting you know. It, it, it's just stupid. Like, the Chauve pig who likes Bukowski doesn't seem to understand that, like, if one of the reasons why you like Bukowski is because of how he treats women, um, you're a fractured shit of a human being that does not understand women at all. And this is 2023. You could go on YouTube and fucking don't look up any videos from men and don't look up any videos from fucking right wing Christian women, but just look up typical videos. Maybe even just go on TikTok and say like, I don't understand women. Help me to understand women. And guess what? They're just fucking people. And if you treat people with respect, you can finally understand how women work. And they're not very different than you. It's weird. I know. Oh, my fucking God. So, um, the other part of his misogyny and the alpha dudes who fucking, like, worship at the feet of Hank is that 
and this is like a me thought. I don't know how like practical or like popular this view is, but I think Bukowski was um, closeted at least bisexual. And some of you who've read a lot of his work would say, like, are you sure even closeted? Like, um, but there were many, many, many times through a lot of his work where he would talk about having sex with men, talk about men trying to have sex with him, talk about how maybe we should all just fuck each other and not care about fucking labels. Maybe that would make everything better. And doing all this shit because guess what? He related with men a lot better than he related with women. Okay? So, um, if you want your, um, like, Messiah to be bisexual, which is completely fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But I know a lot of you um, angry young dudes... Um, might have an issue with that. So if that's the case, you might need to look in the mirror because there might be a reason why you're so drawn to somebody's work who's repeatedly kind of dipped into that well a little bit. Just saying. I'm not trying to call you out or nothing here. Let's see what else we got. Um, he's drunk and gross. That's one of the things that makes people like him and why because this is something that people say all the time like people who don't read will read Bukowski because he's not just easy to read but he writes in a conversational tone to where it's like you're just a friend and he's telling you a story okay like he's friendly in his narrative He's trusting you with his, his deep, dark secrets. You know, he's reaching out to people who don't normally get reached out to. And that's his fucking charm. So, like, it's just, it's funny because, like, one of the things that people hate about him is that he is very simple to read and he's fucking gross with a lot of the shit that he says. But you don't understand that that is like a huge part of his allure. Okay. So you, you got to figure that out. So, um, all of the educated motherfuckers, maybe take note, um, quit being so fucking phony, drop your mask a little bit, share a little bit about yourself a little bit more. And do it in a fucking friendly, conversational way and not a douchebaggy, uppity way. Okay? Just a little little tidbit for you there. A little free tip. Free tip. Um, th yeah, the alpha male shit, I just, I don't understand. Okay, and so here's another thing that a lot of people say. Um, they say how um, in his writing there is, it's very bleak. Like, there's not a lot of um, light at the end of the tunnel. Now, again, if you are someone who is reading through Bukowski's life and say that, I don't know how you can even say that. Because if you read Ham on Rye being fucking a horrific childhood to factotum, um, which is basically the 10 year drunk to post office, which is where he goes from working a shit job for a very long time to, um, becoming a published writer and being able to live off of his writing to women where he becomes famous to fucking Hollywood where he's on top of the fucking world and making money hand over fist. That's fucking light at the end of the tunnel. That is a fucking hero's fucking journey. Okay? So you got to read all those books. Okay? And I'm sorry if, like, there's not enough fucking lollipops and sunshine at the end of each chapter of every fucking book you read. But it's, it's a process. It's a fucking journey. Okay? Like, if you read factotum and then hollywood you would not even believe that that was the same character okay but you you read all the books in order 
in order chronologically, and you see what the fuck happened. And it's fucking shocking. All right? So, um, there's that. And then um, there was this other, uh, let me see, is that right here? Okay, yeah, yeah, this is one of the things. <clears throat> um, one of the guys who was doing one of these um, videos was saying how he prefers Bukowski's poetry over the novels, whereas when he was younger, he liked the novels better than the poetry. And he likes the poetry better because um, it's more, like, touching. It's more real. And then he proceeds to read a bunch of poems that Bukowski wrote late in life. I'm not going to fucking say... How are you so fucking stupid that you don't understand how this works? But I'm going to spell this out for you. If he is writing a fictional memoir, okay, about his his life in his 20s and telling you the story of what happened during that time, that might seem a little bleak. That might seem kind of fucked, okay? But, and again, it's a fucking novel, so, you know, storytelling, narrative, the whole fucking deal. Um, but then when you move into his poetry, it is more, like, introspective, as poetry should be, okay? And the later you get in his life, the softer he's going to become, okay? Because if you know anything about his life... He made it. He fought the dragon and he fucking won. And he was just living his best fucking life. With money, with a house, with a wife, with the horses, whatever. And then the closer he got to death and his mortality started looking him in the face, a lot of the stuff and the illnesses a lot of the stuff he wrote definitely took on a different tone than sleeping with prostitutes and getting fucking hammered drunk. So, um, I know that this is just like, like, I don't understand how any of this works, but it, it is very simple if you like look at it in a practical fucking way, okay? Okay. I almost feel that a lot of people who talk about um, Bukowski's poetry and liking his poetry more than, say, his novels or short stories feel like they're dodging a bullet because, like, you know, he said some really dirty, fucking nasty, hateful shit in his novels and in his short stories. But, like, his poetry, you know, I feel I feel more comfortable with that. The thing is, is that he wrote way more poems than he wrote short stories or novels, okay? In those poems, there is still some dirty, nasty, fucked up shit. But there's so many poems that a lot of that shit gets buried. So, like, just liking the poetry for that isn't going to fucking do you a whole lot of good. In fact, if you read... Um, a lot of his poetry from the like late 60s into the like late 70s like some of that shit could get fucking pretty fucking hardcore okay and that's when he was like on his rise so don't like wear the oh I only like his poetry thing because it could be just as awful. So, just throwing that out there. All right. Um, oh, and then, too, if we're going to get on that fucking topic, every fucking poetry book that came out after Bone Palace Ballet, um, up through when um, Abel DiBurrito started editing his stuff. Um, those were all heavily edited by John Martin, and he took all of the, like, not all, but a lot of the drinking and 
bad words for women and stuff like that took all that stuff out of the poems and like um really kind of rewrote a lot of his stuff so if you're also reading those books um yeah you're gonna think the motherfucker's a saint at that point um all right all right all right on with it you motherfucker uh okay we talked about macho um we talked about that um we talked about that uh and then um this bit about um he wouldn't have anything to write about if his life wasn't shit um and that he needed to have the struggles that he had in order to become an artist. Um, there's a part of me that agrees with this, but there's also a part of me that um, thinks that if you're an artist, um, you're going to create art no matter what. And I think a lot of people who are artists that's just innate <clears throat> like it's not it's not that you're an artist because you're a product of your environment you are just an artist it's something like spiritual or fucking like genetic or i don't fucking know but the people who are artists are usually shown to be artists from very fucking early age and um so whether he was a writer or playing the piano or fucking, I don't know, sculpting shit out of marble. I don't think his upbringing and all that shit made him a writer. I think it gave him stuff to write about. But for those of you who go, well, yeah, but like if he didn't have all that, if he wasn't living on hard times, he wouldn't have anything to write about. Just look at everything he wrote from fucking like 1980 until his death like obviously ham on rye came out during that time and it was about his childhood but um after that like he was writing about all sorts of shit he still had shit to write about that wasn't about his upbringing wasn't about being poor wasn't about drinking wasn't about sleeping around so when people make fucking statements like that, it just shows how little you actually know about the person and the subject matter. So when you make these broad sweeping fucking statements, like, I don't know. But again, critics and people who like to discuss the um, social impact of certain artists and artists' work usually have nothing fucking to say anyway. So it doesn't fucking matter. They make shit up so they can have a conversation and sound intelligent for 30 minutes to 45 minutes. Whatever. I don't give a shit. But I'm just letting you know you're fucking wrong. Okay. So, uh... Okay. So this was something that was said on... I think this was on the Band Book Club video. That Bukowski self-sabotaged every job he had and every relationship he was in so he didn't have to try. Okay? Now, when somebody says something like that, it automatically, like, and I'm... Um, Maybe I'm generalizing just like you're generalizing. It automatically makes me think of <clears throat> just like privilege. And it makes me think like, oh, you have had everything handed to you your fucking entire life. Like you have no idea how hard it is to fucking struggle. You have no idea how hard it is to fucking bust your ass just so you're not fucking homeless. You have no idea what it's like to not eat food for three fucking days while you're trying to figure out how to fucking get enough scratch together to get something to fucking eat. Okay? So, um, when, like, the, okay, whether it is mental health issues, 
whether it is autism, whether it is like rage issues, whether it is whatever, there are lots of mental and scientific reasons why people cannot be in certain areas for long periods of time doing shit that is being um, kind of where you are treated like less than a human because you are working under someone else. And I'm not trying to be super vague here, but um, every person I know who says things like that usually like had whatever fucking easy job they had that they got for whatever fucking reason didn't have to fucking pay to go to school somebody else paid for them to go to school to get their nice fucking degree um i don't know like and i'm not trying to be like classist about this or anything like that but i just feel like there's a lot of people out there who say stupid shit because they have no idea that when they say these things, it makes them sound completely classist. And, like, just, like, no clue at all. Completely oblivious to the fact that when you say something like that, that that is, like, really fucking, like, hurtful and triggering to a lot of people. You know, because it's fucking easy for you. Like, all you have to do is fucking try what's depression i don't fucking know but you know just fucking do the thing right just you know go be a fucking whore for some fucking corporate overlord it's fine everything will work out you just gotta do it right you know um so i don't know so that's that um the thing about women and this is where i'm gonna especially in the Ham on Rye Factotum era, and pretty much the post office era too. The women that Bukowski treats very poorly are women that he either feels on equal ground with or slight um, moral superiority, okay? Which is why, like, a lot of the women he spent time with back in the day were prostitutes, um, alcoholics, uh, gamblers, um, the whole thing. Whenever he is interacting with women that are kind of like above his social class, um, in the books, he might say something here and there. But in person i doubt he ever fucking like said boo like he would get shut down and he would just kind of nod and walk away because the inferiority complex he had was astronomical and i really think if any fucking like i don't know like mental health professional or fucking psychologist read his shit and did like a fucking analysis of it it would be very eye-opening to a lot of motherfucking people okay so i don't think it has anything to do with um him not wanting to try um or try to make things i i, I don't know i just like Again, general sweeping fucking statements about shit are fucking ridiculous. Now, here is, um, and I'm not going to quote it because I'm sure I typed it down wrong as it was being said. Um, but something on, I think this was on that video too. Um that she didn't like what he wasn't admitting and she's not a fan of his way of thinking. 
And these are extremely vague fucking statements. You know, like, what the fuck does that mean? Thinking about what? Admitting what? What do you want him to think about? What things did he think that you were having a problem with? What things do you think he was supposed to admit that he didn't admit? Like, who the fuck talks like that? Like, that's like politician gobbledygook. You're just saying things that there's there's no receipts, there's no facts, there's no nothing. Like, and I'm not saying everyone who does these reviews needs to fucking, like, cross-reference every bit of fucking dialogue in a fucking book, but it's just like, I don't know. And here's the thing that's funny, like, um, especially with that book club one, they love Bukowski. And so they're, they're not, like, on the anti-Bukowski train, um, but... They spent, I don't know, a half hour talking about why they don't like him. And then at the very end, we're like, but we really do like him. So whatever, that's fine. Um, and then, oh yeah, this was on that last one too. Um, so this was really funny. So they like the guy on this thing was talking about how, you know, when he was younger, like he was totally like... I don't know if he used the word idolized Bukowski, but he was just all for it, you know, like super into Bukowski, the whole deal. And then, um, you know, and it, then like later in the video, he's like, well, you know, I mean, like, I don't really like it as much now, you know, I mean, I'm 26 and da, 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 da. And I'm like, dude, you're still a baby. Like, you're still a baby. Like, and I'm not trying to say that in a fucking condescending thing, but like, you're just now living life. Like, all of your college years and all that stuff, that was all pretend fucking hogwash. That's like a fake reality that is not real. Okay? So, you've been, like, I don't know, among the living for like two years now, let's say. Unless you're in grad school, and then I, I don't know what the fuck to tell you. Maybe, maybe four years, maybe two years. Um... But so it's, it's hard for, I mean, maybe if the people watching your channel are like 17 or 18, like they look at you as a wise sage, but when a person in their mid twenties starts talking about like life lessons from literature and gets it wrong a lot of the time it, it's just like it makes me not it makes me feel like i'm punching down so like i don't even want to fucking talk shit anymore okay i just thought it was kind of kind of humorous and then he he ended it by saying like don't get sucked into the chinaski persona which i feel like your entire fucking review was you guys like reviewing the persona or the myth more than you were actually reviewing the book and i feel like that's what a bunch of motherfuckers do so um i don't know this is a really long video so i think this might be a podcast episode now so um i don't know i guess we will jump into the butt plugs now Butt plugs. Here we are. How are you guys doing? That's great. So, um, if you would like to, no, you know what? Let's just let's just get into some stuff. So, fuck you is my newest chat book. The main idea of it was a bunch of angsty, angry poems um, that I had written. Um, these poems were all written this fall. Um, there's 14 poems, it's 40 pages, um, and there's 20 copies of this, the first nine are signed. And um, it even has a fly leaf, look at that, fancy pants. Um, and I'm going to just read one of the shorter poems to you, because this one's been going on a long time. Although I think one of my best poems I've ever written is in here, 
and that one's called uh, My Myth of Sisyphus, and I'll, I think I'm going to do just a video of that. I'll read that one. Um, but this one is just one of the short ones in here. It's called Immortal Lines. Naked, in the shower, water running down my face, hot as fire, steam thick, could poke it with my finger. I was thinking of a new poem, came up with a great line. Ah, oh, that's a good one. Then I came up with another. Then an immortal line. One that I would be known for forever. This is fucking great. I'm on a goddamn roll. Line after line. The best shit I've ever done. Metaphors pouring like honey on warm biscuits. I couldn't believe it. I didn't want to get out of the shower. Because all these great lines. But I also knew I may forget them if I didn't get out soon. This poem is all I remember from that damn shower. So, um, writer's life, right? Am I right? Am I right? Writer problems. Yeah. So, so that's that. Um, but I want to do the motherfucking shout out. Huh. But first, if you want fuck you, you fuck, depending on how you read it. Send me an email. I hate Mountwall gmail.com. There are only 20 of these. So if you want, you must get. If you want any of my other stuff, because um, like right now, this is the only chapbook I have available because I don't have an Etsy shop anymore. So this is all you can get right now. If you want any of my other stuff, like my um, like novels or short story collections or other poetry collections in ebook form or things like that, just go to Amazon and type in the name of any of my books. Um, or you can just go to IHateMattWall.com and click the Amazon link in the top right corner, and that will take you to my Amazon page with all my books. But, so, for the shout-outs, I want to give a thank you to my Patreons over there on the Patreon. Michael, Cedar, Harry, and Deb, thank you guys so much. And then for the YouTube, thank you, crew. I want to give a thank you to Patrick, to Britt, to Jan, to Deb, to Ethan, to Julia, to Lauren, to Cedar, and to Booknick. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. And then for the big swinging dicks and the anarchy crew, I want to give a thank you to Nate, to Mindy, to Thomas, to Shaylin, to Tamara, to Adam, to Chase, to JH, and to Jessica. You guys are the shit. And as always... For the biggest of all swinging members, I want to give a big thank you to the number one chappy over there at the Chapbook of the Month Club, Caitlin. Thank you. And if you would like to join my Patreon and get basically nothing, um, go to patreon.com slash mattwall. Or if you want to go to YouTube and get all sorts of shit for supporting me, you can go to youtube.com slash at Matt Wall, like at sign Matt Wall. And again, most of the shit will be down below. Until next time, keep buying my books. Type hard, everybody. Join the Anarchy Crew, and I will talk to you all later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon, I appreciate the hell out of you guys. Thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew of the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.